pork, called by one celebrity chef the other white meat. I think it does not get enough praise. Intrinsically, we know that pork gives us all sorts of things, but I think we forget about it. From pork, we get bacon, we get pork chops, tenderloin, ribs, bacon, ham, bacon. And so, let's choose this for our first protein that we're going to do on the show. See, we need amino acids from all these proteins in order to create our muscles to make us nice and strong. So, let's talk about what we can do with this pig. Overlay, please. Well, I guess it's not all that effective on a stuffed pig, but Porkmeister here can do the job. So down here, the most important part is where we get bacon from. This is the belly. And then in here is the loin and the tenderloin, which we'll discuss in a moment. And then up here, one of our focuses today will be the shoulder, or more fondly known as the butt. So, welcome to the basics. Now I'd like to consider one of the juiciest, most tender ways we can treat pork, and that's pulled pork. Let's take this and see if we can do some things with it. We'll start with a rub. A good dry rub is like a good stock for your soup. It's the base of flavor for your whole dish. So there's a few things we need for sure. We're gonna need salt and pepper, and we're definitely gonna need paprika, smoked if you can find it. Um, we're also going to need onion and garlic. Now beyond that, it's really to your own taste as to what you'd like. I love cumin, so I'm going to add some of that in there. We're going to get some chili in there. Ooh, garam masala. I'll talk about that in a minute. And, oh, don't forget your brown sugar. That's one of your base things, too, that you need. What? I like my spices. Spice rub is actually really flexible, so don't get worried about this. We're going to add some basics and then some extras. So first of all, I'm going to start out with two tablespoons of brown sugar. Now, this can be dark brown sugar, it can be light brown sugar, it can be golden brown sugar, it doesn't matter too much. I also need a tablespoon of salt. And for our pepper, half a teaspoon of pepper, please. Now, you can grind away if you want to with your pepper grinder. You can take already pre-ground pepper. Or, if you have a mortar and pestle, grind half a teaspoon yourself. Now, really with all these spices, if you can grind them just before using them in like a coffee grinder or a spice grinder if you have it, they are going to be the most flavorful and the most fragrant. I know that's not always possible for everything, so the more fresh ground you can have the better. If not, don't fret about it. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of garlic powder. Don't use garlic salt. Sometimes people try to market those as the same. They're not. Garlic salt is a salt-based product, and then we're gonna have this rub that's too salty. Garlic powder is just dried, ground down garlic. And two tablespoons of paprika. Now you heard me mention smoked if you can. Paprika comes in all different varieties. Hungarian, smoked, regular, there's others too that I can't even think of right now. Um, smoked will give it a little bit of smoky flavor because we're going to cheat today on our, our cooking method. And the more smoke we can impart in the process, the better. And I just like the flavor of it. Now, for the optionals, this goes by taste. Add what you like, taste the spices. If you don't like the taste of it, don't add it. So I'm going with 
cumin. We in our house, we like cumin. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of cumin in. Anywhere from half a teaspoon up to two tablespoons of any of these will be just fine. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of chili powder. Chili powder's range, because it's a mix of dried chilies. Ours is not too spicy, so I'm adding a tablespoon of it. If you've got one that's got more kick to it, then you might only want to add uh, two teaspoons or something like that. And then I'm also going to add just a teaspoon of ancho chili powder. Ancho chilies have some good heat to them. They're not crazy hot, but they have some good heat. So we don't like terribly spicy stuff, so I'm going with that. You could also use chipotle, which is a smoked jalapeno. That's a good idea as well. Um, cayenne, if you like a good, strong kick to it. And then finally, this is my special ingredient here. I like garam masala. Garam masala is an Indian uh, spice blend. It's, if I were to describe it, it's, it's a peppery note with flavors of like cinnamon and nutmeg and cardamom in it. It's got a little bit of that sweetness idea, but a little bit of spice, spiciness to it too. I like it a lot, so I'm gonna ha add a teaspoon of that to mine as well. Garma masala, check it out if you can. Then you're going to just mix those up and then see where you're at. I encourage you to taste your spice rub, just a little bit of it, because these are raw spices here. But do you like the flavor of it once it's all put together? It'll be strong, but it should already hint to the flavor that you're going to taste on your pork. So make sure you like it, and if not, change things up. Once you've applied your rub, take and put it in a nice sealed container so that the fridge stuff doesn't get into it and it avoids cross-contamination. Or you could just put it in a sealed bag if you really have to, if you don't have a container that will fit. And then you might have to rearrange and park it right down in the lowest part of your fridge and leave it there overnight. That way all those flavors can meld together and penetrate into the fibers of the shoulder. I've taken my butt out of the fridge and I'm just touching up some of my rub here, making sure that it's really into all the crevices before we go ahead and start cooking it. What you're wondering about this thing over here? All right, fine, I'll talk about it. Recently, the tenderloin has been getting all of the press. See, I understand. The tenderloin is nice and tender, and it's lean, there's not much fat in it, so it's nice and healthy, but it's really only good for hot applications where you get it done to just the right temperature in a pan or on a grill or in a hot oven. It's not good for low and slow. People are trying to make pulled pork out of it. It ends up dry, and then you're adding a liter of barbecue sauce to it to make up for that fact. Please, believe in the butt. Go with it. It will provide a much more juicy and tender product when you're done because all of that connective tissue that I'm trying to work around and rub this into right now and all the fat is going to break down and just melt to create a beautiful product. So please, please, stick with the butt. Another note, I forgot to talk about safety. Notice I'm using this red cutting board. This is the only thing I do meat on because meats can harbor bacteria that are nasty and they do not like your stomach. Well, actually they like your stomach, your stomach doesn't like them. 
So anytime you deal with raw meat, make sure that all surfaces, including your hands, are washed down with hot, soapy water before you move on to anything else. So now that I've checked all my crevices and added a little bit of extra rub to it, I'm gonna go wash my hands. Oh, I'm a piece of health food, everybody loves me. Yeah, well, I'm full of flavor and I... Sorry. Um, the way we're gonna cook this is in a slow cooker. This way we can get that nice, tender, juicy flavor when we're done. Set your slow cooker to low. And then we're going to park our butt in there for eight hours, give or take a little bit. I'll show you closer to the end how we know when it's done. You don't need to add anything else because we've got that nice rub on it. Just park it in there, put your lid on and let it go. You know what, but first, before I touch my lid, I gotta wash my hands. Let's have a look, shall we? Take two forks. And pull it apart. Does it give way? Or is it still kind of stuck together? This is pulling apart beautifully. So we are ready. Now carefully and patiently we're going to transfer this from our crock pot into a clean bowl. Take a couple of forks. If you want to work with bigger utensils, you can, but I find this works just as well. And first of all, if there's any large chunks of fat with it, like I've got some here that on the top, you can just pull that away. We're not really going to want that. And then in chunks at a time, because it's going to fall apart on you here, transfer over to your bowl. Depending on where you got your meat and who your butcher is, they may or may not have deboned your butt, because remember it's a shoulder, before you got it. Mine happens to have the bone in it here, so I'm going to work around it as I transfer in. See, here's, here's my shoulder bone right here. I'm trying to avoid, again, those large chunks of fat because they're not really going to break down. If they haven't broken down in this eight hour plus cook time that I've had, they're just going to sit as chunks in our final pulled pork. And that's not tasty. All right, once you're confident that you've got the majority of that meat out of there, we can set the bowl aside. And now we get to the fun part. All you need is a couple of forks and we pull. Rip it apart from itself. Pull it into those strings that it naturally wants to make. If we do this while it's still hot, we'll get the best consistency. Good. Now it's sauce time. When it comes to sauces, I am not opposed to a good quality pre-made sauce. But since we're at it right now, we might as well make our own. In a small to medium sized sauce, uh, saucepan, we're going to take one and a half cups of everyone's favorite ketchup. Add to that half a cup of cider vinegar, and half a cup of plain old water. We need two tablespoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of dry mustard powder, or if you don't have that, you could use prepared yellow mustard, one teaspoon of garlic powder, same stuff that went into our rub and half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Finish it off with 
half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a teaspoon of salt. Put this over top of your burner and bring it to a simmer over medium heat for about five minutes until all your ingredients are combined. Stir occasionally, please. Once it's hot and fully combined, turn off your burner, bring it over to your pork and dump it on. Use your forks to make sure you can get that covering all of your meat. Sorry, Porkmeister. And then you're ready to serve. Yes, typically you'd serve it over something of a starch nature, like a bun, but... Oh, fine. I'll have it over rice. Until next time, choose low and slow.